morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. The best selling book in the world is the book of happiness. And you and I know we call this the Bible. According to the world records, the best selling book is the Bible. But if only it was a best read book and the best lived book, what a beautiful world we'll have. What a happy world we have. In the Bible, one of the important keys to happiness that Jesus tells us is this. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Jesus says, take care, beware, and guard yourself from every kind of greed. Guard yourself from every kind of greed. So there are different kinds of greed. You know, one of the most happiest persons I've seen is Pope Francis. And he says, greed destroys every possibility of happiness. Now coming to what the Lord has says, guard yourself from every kind of greed. And today we're going to look at one kind of greed, which is really a joy sapper, and that is comparison. When I compare who I am, what I have, what I do with what someone else has, with what someone else is or what someone else does, this is a clear sign of discontent. I'm not happy with what I have and I want what somebody else has. And the sad fact is this joy sapper is what we are trained in right from our earliest years. You remember how you are graded in school? You get the third rank or the fourth rank. So it do doesn't depend on how well you've done, what marks you get, but on how many people are better than you and how many people are worse than you. And when you come home, there are some miserable parents or perhaps parents who are wonderful, but who have this little bit of miserableness in them who keep comparing their children with everyone in the world. I remember as a child, I would look at my mother's nose and look at my nose and I think she has such a fine, long, straight nose. How I wish I had that nose. We place our happiness outside of what we have. I used to look at my brother's fingers nice and long and, and I would think, oh, if only I had fingers like this, I could play the piano, I could do so many things. I've placed all my abilities in what someone else has. I would look at my aunt who had beautiful straight hair and I would have this fuzzy curly hair and until she told me how I wish I had curly hair like you. So we have been looking outside of ourselves, comparing ourselves with what everyone else in the world has as a result of which we have come to realize comparison deprives us of joy. If you want joy in your life, stop comparison. Comparison deprived humanity of paradise. Remember how Satan, when he wanted to steal paradise from human beings, the first thing is he sowed the seed of discontent. He showed to Eve the one fruit that she did not have. And he said, Oh, if only you were like God. And if you want to be like God, you need to have that fruit. Well, she already was like God. Remember, we are made in the likeness of God. And yet, when she compared herself, she lost paradise. When you hold on to comparison, you lose friends. Because what is friendship? Friendship is celebrating others, celebrating the gifts that others have. And comparison ends up in stealing us of even what we have. You remember that beautiful parable Jesus tells us of the three servants who got talents and this guy who got one talent. When he knew that the others got five and ten, he just lost his confidence. He did not look at what he had. He buried his talent only because he was looking at what others had. And too many of us are burying our talent. Too many of us are not allowing our little lamp to shine because we are comparing. Dear friends, at the end of this parable, Jesus tells us a statement that is actually a bit shocking. He says, to the one who has, 
more will be given. Remember the one with 10 talents, he received more. And the one with 5 talents received more. And then he said, to the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And we could say, isn't God being unfair? But let us try to understand. Jesus is revealing to us how important, how important to recognize that the attitude of comparison is dangerous. The one who has is one who treasures what he has. When I treasure the little responsibility, the little talent that I have, I develop it and it becomes better. But when I do not consider what I have because I'm constantly looking at what others have, then I don't nurture what I have. I'm inattentive to my little gift and I let it slip away. Dear friends, like the song goes, let your little light shine. It may be a little lamp, but it makes a big difference. Let your little light shine. Cherish your little talent. Cherish who you are, because that is the best thing you can do to make this world a better place and to live your life, your friendships, your faith as a celebration. A rich nobleman in a certain village in Europe wanted to leave a legacy for his fellow villagemen. After having consulted many people as to what he could leave as a legacy, this nobleman decided that he would build a church for his people in the village. He made sure that during the construction, no one in the village would be able to see what he was building and he wanted to leave it as a surprise for his village people. The day finally arrived when the construction was completed and the people gathered together for the grand opening of the church. The village people were simply marveling at the beautiful way the church was constructed and they really were thankful for the noble gesture of this noble man. As the people entered inside the church, and as we're looking at the wonderful way the church decorations were done, one person looked in a little more closely and made an observation and told the nobleman, Sir, everything looks so beautiful in this church, except for this one fact. I don't find any lights around here. Don't you think that the church will be too dark if there are no lights provided. And to that, the nobleman looked at the man and pointing his fingers to the walls at the sides, he told him, do you see there are small gaps that are placed at every part of the wall? Well, these gaps are meant for each family in the village when you come to the church to bring a lamp and place it there. Every time a family comes to the church, you are expected to fill up that gap with the lamp of your life. And suppose if you don't turn up that day, that part of the church would remain in darkness. Each of you are expected to be a light in this house of God. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel, John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Anyone who is in Jesus Christ, the light of the world, will be able to radiate and shine the light of God to the people around. Jesus, when he came into this world, became a light for many who were in darkness. People who had lost faith and hope in life were able to experience the light of Christ in their life. And through the Gospel of St. John, Jesus is exhorting his disciples, his followers to be like Jesus, becoming a light to the people around. We who are living in this world are expected to, by our words, by our actions, by our thoughts, radiate Jesus Christ, the light to the people around. Surely, as we live our lives, 
We know we have moments and times when there are dark situations. Times when things are not really clear and good enough. But in all those moments, we are expected to hold on to Jesus Christ, the light of the world, and allow His light to shine in our life. Remember, each of us are part of God's house and we all have a role to play. If we fail to play that role of being a light to the world, then that part of God's house will remain in darkness. Let us not allow such things to happen in our life. Rather, let us always allow God's light to shine forth in our life and thus let us always illuminate God's house with our words, with our actions and with our thoughts that are united with Christ. May this day be a day when we discover Jesus, the light of the world more and more and thus allow his light to shine forth for the people. May the name of the Lord be ever praised and may Jesus, the light of the world, bless all of us. Live Jesus. The Holy Spirit loves every one of us and that is why the Holy Spirit dwells within every one of us and He loves us so much He gives every one of us gifts. But there are certain things very special about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. A gift the Holy Spirit gives to us is in fact given to us in order for us to light up the church. Every gift to the Spirit is to build the church. And the other interesting aspect about the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the more we use it for the glory of God, the far more beautiful, the far more brilliant that gift becomes. Dear friends, while when we use the gifts, it goes up to add for the glory of God, the moment we compare, we in fact are putting a blot on the nature of God. Why? Because when I compare, I am in fact saying that the work of God is inconsistent. The work of God is not always good. God made that person more blessed, more good looking, more capable, more talented than me. But the fact is, if God is God, he's a master craftsman. Everything he does is in perfection. Everything he does is beautiful. Everything he does gives glory to his kingdom. And that is why it is so necessary for us that we acknowledge God, that we acknowledge that he is a God of perfection. And that is when we begin to celebrate our gifts and we are able to celebrate the gifts of others. Even the smallest little person will have a blessing to give us. The antidote to comparison is gratitude. And one of my favorite hymns of gratitude is this. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done things both great and small, and for Jesus Christ, your son, thank you most of all. Dear friends, Jesus is a treasure of our life. If we have Jesus, we have everything. When we have Jesus, every gift of our life begins to glimmer and glow. So friends, let us treasure our God. Let us treasure our faith. And don't you ever compare your faith with someone else's faith. Your faith is for you to treasure, for you to nurture. And others' faith is for you to celebrate and be blessed by. So let us adore Jesus. Let us treasure his love and let us nurture our faith. Oh, hands be the glory of the risen Lord Who can compare With the beauty of the Lord Forever you will be The last
stamp upon the throne I gladly bow my knee And worship you Hallelujah 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 Let us reach our hands out to Jesus Let us welcome him Let us welcome him into every pain of our body Let us welcome him into every part of our body that is sick and there is belief this the lord is come today to heal us and his power will flow into us and his glory will be manifested today and that's why jesus said when you stand praying believe what is prayed for is already granted therefore we rejoice we rejoice and we praise him hallelujah 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 lord jesus lord jesus i believe i believe you're my savior you're my savior i believe i believe you're my healer you're my healer lord jesus lord jesus i believe i believe you have come today you have come today to heal us to heal us lord jesus lord jesus i believe i believe i believe i I believe in your love for me in your love for me hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah 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 the lord is asking you what do you want me to do for you a question jesus asked the blind man in jericho what do you want me to do for you look at jesus and tell him look at jesus and tell him what do you want what do you want jesus to do for you let's reach our hands out to him when we tell jesus what we want him to do for us we believe it is already granted we believe the grace is given we believe the healing is flowing into our hearts all that we need to do is to accept to accept the grace in faith without any doubt in our hearts Bartimaeus the blind beggar he cried aloud in the midst of a crowd everybody discouraged him why do you shout out like this for Jesus to hear how can Jesus hear you look at the crowd hear the bustle the noise the crowd is making but Bartimaeus was not discouraged he continued crying aloud with a great faith the Lord will hear his cry and Bartimaeus was right the cry did not sing in the bustle of the crowd Jesus heard him Jesus heard him and called him and asked him what do you want me to do for you how did Jesus hear him in the midst of the crowd the psalmist tells us God is attentive to the cries of the poor again the psalmist tells us this poor man cried and God answered 
this is the moment god is waiting to answer and the lord is telling us when we stand praying believe what is prayed for is already granted so we are going to praise him let us raise our hands up to god we are going to rejoice in the presence of god because our healing is now taking place every pain the lord is taking over every pain of our body the lord is taking charge and therefore we rejoice in faith we would praise our god be sure the lord the lord will hear your cry your voice will not be lost in the midst of the crowd you are not one of the crowd here you are the son the daughter of the heavenly father whom the heavenly father has brought to the side of jesus and therefore jesus cannot be unmindful of your cry jesus cannot be indifferent to your pain it's a command the mission the son of god has received from the heavenly father to make sure that we do not perish and the lord is taken this time to come to us to make sure that we do not perish let's raise our hands up as high as you can to our god to our god and we want to praise him we want to praise him we want to offer to him every pain of our body and we want to praise him hallelujah hallelujah raise your voices raise your voices praise the living god praise the living god believe in the power believe in the power of the lord a god is here a master is come is come to heal you my brother my sister is come to heal you is come is come to take authority over every ailment of your body praise the living god surrender surrender your aches and pains to him hallelujah hallelujah praise you jesus thank you lord you are the savior you are the healer you are our god jesus praise you jesus thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah praise you jesus we want to surrender our aches and our pains every part of our body to the lord this body is molded by the hands of the lord in the womb of our mother and today the hands of the lord are remolding your body taking away all the disability all the pain all the stiffness that we may rejoice in the presence of our god let us sing together healer heal me let it be a hymn of faith total faith total surrender in the hands of our god He will heal me Cleanse my soul Save you touch me Touch me And make me whole Make me whole And he will heal me Heal me Lord Cleanse my soul Save you touch me touch me Lord and make me whole Jesus make me whole I come into your presence Jesus to seek refuge in you, in you my savior you are my rock my strength my strength Savior, make me whole. I believe. And Jesus. He will heal me. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
my Savior, my God. Have mercy. Have mercy upon your children. Your power. Touch me, Lord Jesus. Your power descend. Your power descend upon your children, Lord. And your healing power. Jesus, your compassion. Your power, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your power. You are the Lord. You are the Savior. Touch me, Lord. Jesus, touch my brothers, my sisters. Your touch, your healing touch, the saving power. We believe. Lord, we believe. We praise. We praise you, Lord. My brothers, every pain, all the backache, all the backache, all the problem of the shoulders. Lord, all the cancer. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you, all the arthritis, all the eyes of God, we offer to you. We trust in your mercy, in your compassion, Lord. We believe in your power. Jesus, praise you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, have mercy, Lord. We believe. Jesus, help my unbelief. We believe in your power. Descending upon my brothers, my sisters, have mercy, Lord. Everyone with the problem of the heart, have mercy, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We have a God who is concerned, a God we can reach out to, and the Lord will reach out to us to touch and heal us. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. Let's all kneel down to receive the blessing of the Lord. Let's all kneel down, those of you who can, to praise and thank our God. Let's believe in what God is doing for us. And we want to praise Him and thank Him. We want to worship Him. We want to adore Him. Let us receive the blessing of our God. Oh, sacrament, most holy. Oh, sacrament, divine. Oh, praise and all thanksgiving. celebrates you. So all the more why today we need to make a decision. Celebrate your life. Celebrate your gifts. Celebrate who you are because then your life will be a celebration for the world. God bless you and have a beautiful day with Jesus. The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust CD account number 0402231. 00000 
వన్ ఫోర్ హిఎఫ్సి బ్యాంక్ చాలకుడి బ్రాంచ్ ఐఎఫ్ఎస్సి కోడ్ హిఎఫ్సి జీరో 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 ఫోర్ జీరో టూ అండ్ ఈమెయిల్ ద డీటెయిల్స్ టు డివైన్ రిట్రీట్ సెంటర్ అట్ జీమెయిల్ డాట్ కామ్